Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Um, in this video, I will demonstrate how to use the Velociraptor offline collector to collect and triage um, machines uh, that uh, you don't have Velociraptor installed on. So it's kind of an offline collector because uh, we will prepare a pre-configured version of Velociraptor which is uh, exactly set to collect the evidence that you want uh, into a zip file. And then you simply run it wherever you need instead of uh, having to install Velociraptor on a permanent basis, uh, just collect it in an offline way. So um, we'll start off, I'll just demonstrate how to build one of those customized collectors and the type of uh, evidence that we want to collect when we triage a system. Uh, so let's start off uh, by simply downloading Velociraptor. So we would just go to Google, select Velociraptor, and go to our GitHub page. Uh, in this GitHub page, we can download the latest release. It's just through our release hub, release page. Um, and at this time, it's 049. Uh, we are on a Windows machine, it's just a, a new v Windows VM. Um, and we've got two options here. We can uh, either download the MSI to install it permanently, uh, but we don't really need to install it permanently for, uh, for this uh, task. So we'll just, we can just download the executable, just the plain executable. Once we downloaded the executable, we can create, we can just start it up. I'll just start a command shell, change to the directory downloads directory like downloads and this is the binary that I've just downloaded the release binary so I can set up and configure and install Velociraptor as we've uh, shown before in previous videos but for this case we just need to bring up the GUI uh, we don't really want to install it on a more permanent basis so we just run uh, the, the binary with the single command called GUI. It just brings up the GUI. So let's start that. And when we set up uh, Velociraptor in this mode, uh, it will just simply create a temporary configuration for itself and start up a, a server and even a client uh, talking on the local host. Um, and then just bring up the browser so we can just use the GUI. So it's very easy to use. We just start it up and it takes care of everything. Um, so what we want to do now is just simply configure an offline collector. So all we have to do is click this button and we are taken to the server artifacts screen. And then the, we have this button here, which is build offline collector. So simply click on that and we are presented with the familiar dialog box for selecting artifacts. Now, for those of you who uh, have used Velociraptor before, you know that Velociraptor is uh, essentially powered by uh, VQL, the Velociraptor query language. And artifacts are just a way of packaging this VQL in, a, in an easy to use way. So the first, the first kind of artifact that I'd like to talk about, to show you guys, is the Cape Files artifact. And Cape Files is a useful artifact that's really primarily concerned with collecting files um, or bulk data basically from the endpoint. So it doesn't really analyze any of the data, it just collects it. Um, and of course it has the NTFS browser so it can, it can get you know, files like the MFD or the log files or USN journal or other things like that. But it doesn't really do anything with these files. Now, this is your traditional sort of forensic collection uh, type analysis, which is useful for initial triaging. Now, this artifact is built from the Cape Files GitHub uh, project, which simply uh, collects a collection of useful search queries for various targets. You can read more about it from this link, uh, but it doesn't actually use Cape itself because Cape itself is not an open source uh, program, uh, but it just uses this. Uh, Cape files. So let's just add that to our collection. And 
you can see that it, it has a UI here that shows us all the different sort of targets that are uh, present. So it just knows how to collect various files. For instance, if we're looking for all Chrome related files, you know, then it knows how to pick up uh, where they are. So it, typically you would use something like uh, the basic collection or the SANS triage collection to just collect a whole bu bunch of basic information. For instance, this one collects the MFT, SRAM, the, the journals, uh, the USN journal and, and various event logs and so on. So in this case, what we, we, will, we will just demonstrate this right now. So click next. Now in this screen, we can configure more about our collector. What, what the Velociraptor will do in this case, it will, it will take the binary, the Velociraptor binary for the target operating system, which is gonna be Windows in this case. Uh, and then it will just pre-configure it to, co to co collect the exact artifacts that we've selected in the previous screen. Uh, we can actually directly upload it to a cloud bucket or an AWS bucket. You can just fill in all these details. But for this, for this video, we just, we just create a straight out zip archive. We can protect it with a password as well. Um, when we click next now, uh, Velociraptor will just, for the first time, just because we've only just installed it, it will just download those binaries for the different targets, for the different operating systems. And so it knows, so it can package them with the configuration. So it's just a, an artifact, it just runs on the server and it, it will eventually create an executable collector file, which we can download through this UI. So eventually we'll see this here. So let's click on that and we'll see that it downloaded our collector. So we'll start up another command shell here. And this one I'm going to run as administrator because I wanna, uh, I wanna be able to read the MFT and other things like that. So let's go back to our downloads directory. And you can see that there is a new collector created. Now this is exactly just the Velociraptor, but it's just pre-configured to do the exact collection that we said, so the cape file collection. So all we really have to do is just run it without any arguments and it knows what it's supposed to be doing. So let's just do that. Um, as, as, as you can see, we just start up and it starts to collect all of these things. So it, it runs the collector automatically um, and then it will find the you know, USN journal and the MFT and other things. And, you can see it will just kind of find all of these files and then start to collect them. Add this a bit so you can see it a little bit better. So in this case, you can see it's collecting the MFT, which is going to be you know, a little bit fairly big. Uh, then the log files, and then it's going to collect um, yeah, it's going to collect some event logs and. You know, there's some registry hives and, and various various things. Essentially, all of these things are, are um, selected through the uh, Cape targets that we've selected before, um, some prefetch files and so on. Uh, once it's completed the collection, there's some event logs and so on. So this is really just all about collecting files and just putting them in a zip file. That's all it is. Um, but it's using raw NTFS access to, to, get, to get at those files. So it's going to take a couple of minutes and then it's completed. Now at this point, you can see that it's created a container, which is a zip file, which has the host name in it and so on, and created a report. So let me just bring up the Explorer and have a look at what we've created. So in the zip file, it's just a normal regular zip file that you can browse and you can see files like the MFT and so on. Um, it also has all the metadata, uh, which includes, you can open that, uh, all the metadata. Um, and then it creates a report here, which describes the collection. So let's open that and we will see 
this is our collection report. So it's telling us that we've collected the Kepa's artifact. We can view a description of it if we want it to understand what does it actually do, some references, and it just basically tells us how many files we've collected, the timestamps and so on. So we've got um, 634 files and, and so on. So it just basically tells us uh, an overview of what we've collected, but the, the zip file contains the actual files. So this is great. Let me just delete those and start fresh. For the next example, uh, so we need to appreciate that all Velociraptor is doing is just running artifacts. So it's the same thing, the same artifact that we collect from clients and servers uh, when we have a distributed mode, but it is just collecting it in an offline manner. So if you write your own custom artifact, then you can just select that and it will collect it exactly the same way as it would without having an installed agent. It doesn't need to be an agent. It just can collect it as an offline uh, manner in this way. So for the next example, so we know that cave files was really all about collecting files. Uh, but a lot of the time when we do triage of, of a potentially compromised machine, we want to know a lot about the state of the system that maybe isn't exactly captured in files. Uh, and especially for rapid triage, we want to do a lot of our processing actually on the system uh, so that we can get immediate results. Otherwise, we'd have to take our file and then you know, run our forensic tool offline and try and find any kind of evidence. And then, then that takes longer. So we would actually like to run um, many of the artifacts that we normally use uh, to triage rapidly across a large network, we would like to run them immediately. So for instance, in this case, uh, like, let's just say that one of the things that I would generally do is maybe collect some, some handles and immediately see some of the VADs and, that are loaded and all the different processes and maybe some mutants. So these are just typical uh, memory analysis type uh, type uh, artifacts that we can collect. Of course, it's not using memory analysis, it's simply calling the API. So it should be very, very quick to get this information. Another very uh, popular choice here is to use uh, autoruns. Now autoruns is a sysinternals tool, uh, which is uh, designed to just basically go through and try and find uh, wherever different persistence mechanisms that uh, malware tends to kind of hide in. And you can see that um, it is an external tool. Uh, and so we can see here that uh, this particular artifact references those external tools from uh, sysinternals. Uh, if we click on them, then we can see where, where they're actually you know, going to come from, the sysinternal repository. Uh, we can actually override it with our own version um, which you would need to do if you had like some commercial tool that's not freely available or something like this. Uh, but for this internal, uh, it, it, Velociraptor can just go ahead and, and grab that directly from the, the website. Um, and so uh, it makes it very easy for us to, to actually de deploy it because we just select that artifact and add it just as normal. Uh, the other, another cool one is the OS query. Now, OS query is another tool, uh, which is also very popular. And it's quite good because it allows us to query machine state and get some different information about, uh, about the machine. So we can add that one as well. And it's the same sort of deal, right? It basically goes and grabs the OS query binary um, and, and does it. Now, when we use an offline collector, uh, of course, we don't want the endpoint to go ahead and, and grab those tools um, so we actually, Velociraptor actually uh, uh, packages those executables inside the offline collector and delivers them uh, as part of the offline collector. And we'll see that in a minute. Uh, so for instance, with the OS query, uh, we could just select, select star from users, just an OS query query, just a typical one, but we can obviously build, build on that and get lots more information. The OS query is pretty useful tool for that. So again, the same process, we simply select next, uh, the same sort of thing, zip archive, um, sounds good. 
and we just click next. And you can see the Velociraptor is now checking that it has all of the tools that it's going to need. Um, and then it's going to go ahead and package them inside of this collected binary and, uh, and then configure it so it can just work. Uh, and this is, uh, so this collector is actually going to be doing a lot of the analysis uh, on the endpoint directly. So it's not really going to collect the files, but it's going to collect more of the machine space. Okay, so we're going to just download this new collector. Okay. So the same sort of thing. Uh, we don't really need to do anything special with it. We just simply run it because it already is pre-configured to run exactly the artifacts that we've told it to run before. So now when we run it, you can see that it's running off, it's preparing all of its tools, and it's starting collecting the handles. And in order to do that, it needs to open processes in debug mode, and some of them it cannot open because they are protected. Um, and the same thing for the handles and the VAD, the mutants. Uh, then we're gonna go ahead and run the auto runs binary, you can see that it's extracting the auto runs executable into a temp file and then simply running it with the right flags. Uh, and then uh, the same thing with the OS query, it's going to uh, ex extract it, run it, select the query. Then it's going to remove those temp files and create the container as before. So let's have a look at, just refresh that. Uh, so let's have a look at the report that it produces. The same sort of thing as before, but this time it's collecting all of the other artifacts, not just the tape file ones. And so we can see, you know, a little bit more about handles, what is it all about. Uh, again, what VQL was run. That's the VQL that actually grabs the handles um, and it returns 1800 handles. You can view the first 100. This is just really a summary. Now, if we, if we wanted to be more specific in the artifact, we can write our own custom artifact, which narrows down, uh, maybe we're looking for a specific process with specific Yara sig or whatever. So in this case, we can see all of the handles and the object trees and how many rows each of them return. So this is just kind of a quick overview. And we can open the zip file and in here we can see the actual JSON that was returned, for instance, with the uh, OS query, and we can extract it uh, later. Okay, so, uh, so this is basically the idea with the offline collector. Uh, the offline collector is simply a prepackaged binary, just bring that back, the prepackaged binary that just collects the same artifacts. Uh, but the advantage of it is that it, the nice thing about it is it, it's the same artifact, the same VQL that uh, you would write in an open, in, in a normal uh, Velociraptor deployment, except that you don't need to actually have a client deployed. Okay, thank you for, uh, for listening. And if you want to check out Velociraptor, simply uh, go to the web, uh, to the GitHub, download it and have a play with it um, and provide a feedback. Can, you can join our uh, Discord channel and our mailing list. Thanks.